Well, welcome to this week's edition of Bolton In. All thanks to Palmer Bit. And I tell you what, these two blokes are absolutely on fire. They are smoking. And I'm speaking of Adam McGrath all the way from Las Vegas and all the way from Copenhagen, Shane Anderson. How are you, legends? Going well, thanks, Matty. Shane, how are you? Yeah, really well. Good to be back with both of you. And uh, certainly was an exciting weekend of racing last week. And uh, for our first show back, Adam, we had our eye in. Matty managed to find us a long price winner as well. So it was uh, it was a good day out. Boys, to say you had your eye in is an understatement. Fair dinkum. Uh, you both had uh, best and best value lady, Camelot Hayasugi. That ran second and third. I and me, both all over uh, at a big price. Opened up at 11 bucks. Ended up uh, faring around about $5.50. Uh, Manal, I know, odds on, but uh, won and uh, saluted very, very well. And then, yeah, a little deep took out uh, a race uh, at, uh, at the Chautauqua Stakes uh, back at Caulfield. So, yeah, all in all, boys. Fair Nickham, huge weekend for you two. So don't play it down. You're on fire, as I said. Well, the problem is, Matty, uh, you're only good as your next tips. So uh, we're looking straight <laughs> forward to this next weekend with nerves already. But we'll take them when they come. I think I think speaking with Shane as well, like the, the speed maps are exactly what we mapped out with the horse like I and me. Um, everything sort of went to plan. But we know racing doesn't always play out that way. So we'll see what happens this weekend. <laughs> Hey, what'd you make, Shano, of uh, Morning to Glory's victory uh, last weekend at the Moy Stakes? Uh, great for trainer Gavin Bedgwood for mine. Uh, he, he's an absolute uh, beauty, Veggie, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. Uh, former jumps jockey. He spent uh, an apprenticeship sort of as a trainer working with Robbie Lang there for a while and now out on his own. Um, he's uh, one of those, particularly from my days working in the media back home in Australia. I always had a lot of time for, for Gavin and he was always great to deal with. So I was you know, really pleased for him to see him uh, win his Group 1, his first Group 1, hopefully many more. It's interesting though, Matty, and, and Adam, your views on this too, mate. Uh, the, the first two sort of Group 1s of, of the spring in Melbourne, That's we see Envy right. Yusufik come out and win his first. Now the following week, Gavin Bedgood with his first. It, it's often good to see... Um, you know, from a narrative perspective, for those who like to, to take the mickey out of that. But, like, from racing story perspective, it's always good to see trainers who have got great records and, and are fantastic horse people get their, uh, their their big breakout success, I suppose, in these races. And it, you know, shines us away a little bit from the traditional big stables of the Wallers and the Mars and the Waterhouse Bots and uh, Godolphin and so on. It's great to see that fresh talent come through. Uh, he's a fantastic trainer. What a job he's done with this horse. I think, what, 12 months ago, he was running around in Bendigo Maidens or something along the likes, and now he's come out and won a legitimate, outstanding field Group 1 race. Um, from a punting perspective, Lady of Camelot, I thought she was really solid. Uh, her Sugi was outstanding. Uh, there were lots of good runs in the race, so the form looks fairly strong, but all credit to the winner. He was there to win it, and he did yeah, great victory and uh, one for the good guys. You're right, Shane. I want to start the Group 1 season with a couple of uh, lesser-known trainers saluting. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I am me, ads, uh, all over this horse. As you said, Matt to get the run. Punters uh, loaded in as well, didn't they? They launched late, uh, halving its price, and uh, it was all the go. And uh, what a great victory and a great ride. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, sort of when we talked about it last week, everything that we hoped for is what played out in the end. Um, was it the best horse in the race? I don't know, probably not. When you go on, you look at the careers and, and what happens, but every race you got to take separate and analyse separate. And IME was drawn perfectly, was going to get a great run, was always going to be a good fresh horse. The speed was going to suit, be able to tuck behind it, just ticked all of the boxes. And you still need to come out and execute it on the day. The horse was killer, clearly in great condition. Nash rode it absolutely perfect. And when you just know what you're going to get with this horse. It's so honest. It's so tough. It's always up on the speed. So you have to beat it. And when it was tucked behind him, you just knew if it was able to get out, it was going to be very hard to beat. So it was a, a pretty easy watch in the end for the, the punters with IME, as you said. A lot of money for it late and uh, just very excited to see where this horse does go because, as I said, you just know what you're going to get every time it steps out. What would you make of Giga Kick, boys? Yeah, more than a pass mark to my eye. Um, yeah. I think the more you watch the race, uh, I mean, even Adam's uh, favourite, and I know, Maddie, you love Bella Nipatina too. She was terrific. Uh, so the, the big guns coming through that race all look like they're on song. I mean, uh, Giga Kick uh, was back in the field. He worked home as well as he could, you know, sort of weaving his way through the pack, and I thought he was quite strong through the line. So a uh, big tick pass mark from my perspective. Um Hopefully he keeps progressing, um, you know, as he heads towards the Everest and the other big sprint races. But, yeah, he, he did more than enough to my eye. Yeah, I spoke to Clayton Douglas ads and, uh, yeah, not totally wound up the horse, uh, going to sharpen and tighten right up. Question without notice, boys. Uh, early Everest play. I'll start with you, ads. 
Well, look, I can't see anything wrong with Giga Kick so far, to be honest. Um, it was exactly what we expected. I thought the trial was really good. Carrying the 60 and a half, I think he's certainly going the right way. And as uh, Shane sort of alluded, if you know, horses like Bella Nipotini keep going the way they're going, I'll be keeping an eye wherever they move throughout the spring as well because she just continues to go strength to strength. But uh, Giga Kick for mine just looks like he's just come back a little bit more mature. Things have sort of ticked. You know, he's still a young horse. We sort of forget that, that, you know, lightly raced, still learning his craft and, just the way he carried that weight, I think he's potentially come back in better condition than he was last preparation. Shano? Yeah, good question. Tricky question. Um, it, it is. Of the older established runners, uh, I think I wish I win as the one that I'm still being drawn to, uh, provided he goes that direction. Slightly different program this year to what we saw um, Moods uh, and Coleman wanting to do last year. Um of the older horses, he may be the one. But I think if there's a three-year-old that goes into the race and we might be uh, talking about one that's running a little bit later, I mean, a horse like Storm Boy, um, I find fascinating. Uh, wait for age. Uh, it looks tough, fast, quite brilliant. Um, just might be the one that I'd be uh, drawn to the most if we get a guarantee he's going in that direction. But, yeah, really good question, Matty. Um, but, yeah, of the ones, the older established ones, I think I wish I win is the one that's uh, I'm most focused on at the moment. What about you? Uh, I'm with uh, I wish I win as well. I reckon there was a slashing return the other day for mine, uh, you know, just steaming home over the top. That was good enough. Moods. I uh, know oh I was obviously worried about the tight uh, circuit at the Valley, but uh, gee whiz, I reckon that horse uh, is absolutely smoking for mine, and uh, that's good enough. And, and as I said, I did, I did speak to Dougie uh, on Monday just about something else, and I said I had the champ pull up, and he said uh, not totally wound and screwed down yet. So uh, that's exciting, <laughs> and I think that's promising too. So I, I think it's going to be a really good race, and I'm looking forward to it. It's great to see it uh, gaining a bit more uh, prowess or stature, I reckon, if you want to call it that. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of an established race on the calendar now, and it's uh, it's awesome to see, I reckon, so it's good. Hey, listen, legends, let's talk about the uh, the Group 1 on the weekend. There's under the one, Maccabi Diva Stakes, Flemington Race 8. Over the 1,600 metres, it's where the Sydney Raiders start coming into play. It's a, it's an interesting race. Bia Sistina is the palm of favourite at $2.10. Mr. Brightside at $3.90. Pride of Jetty at $5.50. Pinstripe at $7.50. Antino, $13. A Tissue, $18. Warmonger, $26. Circle of Fire at $101. Shane, I'm going to come back to you. Um, Via Sistina was so good um, first up. Uh, you know, will the real Pride of Jenny turn up this week? There's so many questions going to be answered uh, after the Maccabi Diva on Saturday. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, I love this race. And often it can throw up a bit of a result too. So, look, I'm siding with Via Sestina as my best. Uh, her first up win uh, in the Winx was outstanding. Both, I agree. Er, basically, every, every way you look at that race, uh, she ticked the boxes. She was a long way off them. She kept working and working and working. She picked them up and she uh, was able to get there right on the line and super strong through the line too. We know she's an outstanding mare at Group 1 level, both in Europe and in Australia, particularly as the distances get longer. I love the fact she's going to Flemington, Flemington for this 1,600-metre contest. And of all the horses that have had her first up run, she's the one that ticked the boxes the most for me. Uh, I think the form out of Sydney, I might be proven wrong, but from what I've seen, I think it is probably slightly stronger than what we saw in the Memsey. Um, you know, pinstriped all credit to him. He was good. Mr. Brightside was rock solid. Pride of Jenny was a flop on that occasion. You know, she was below par. So I just think on what we've seen from horses first up, Via Sestina looks like she's back in an amazing form and she's the one I want to be with. Although I will say at $2.10, it's a little light for me. I was hoping we'd get a little bit more, but um, I'm finding it very hard to tip against it. So my best for the Maccabi Diva via Sestina. My value bet, I'm going for Warmonger. Now, I don't know specifically uh, if he's actually legitimately good, uh, if he won <laughs> the Queensland. Uh, no, I'm just being brutally honest, right, because, you know, when a horse wins a Group 1 race by uh, a footy field, as he did when winning the Queensland Derby, on face value you go, this horse is the, is the next star of racing. But as a, an owner of a horse who won a Queensland Derby, quite often the uh, format of the race <laughs> can be a little bit a little bit mixed. So the, the point I'm getting at, He's only contested three-year-old races. He's looked pretty good. He got better as each run uh, stepped out in trip. The derby win was visually unbelievable. He's back against the established stars now, but I quite like these first few trials. And I think 
if you want to have a spec bet on something at a bigger price outside of the established, the knowns, he could come out and produce something remarkable and then you go, yep, he's a legitimate star. That derby win was unbelievable. I can't believe we got $26 in the Maccabi Diva. What a horse he is, that type of approach. So I'm looking at it, you know, perhaps slightly weirdly. Uh, I'm very keen on Via Sestina, but I'm going to have a spec bet on Warmonger because I just don't know. And based on what I've seen from his trials, he looks like he's back in pretty good nick. The derby win was unbelievable. If he measures up to the top form, you've got to throw him in the mix and he might be overpriced. So that's why I'm looking at it. Well, I reckon uh, for Mick Price and Michael Kent Jr. to whack him in, uh, a race like this I reckon is a pretty good pointer too, that the horse is obviously going pretty well because they're both astute horsemen. So, uh, Ads, what are your thoughts, mate? Are you with a short price favourite here in Via Sestina who was so good first up? No, I'm not. I'm going to take it on. And it's more, again, just with the way that I see the race unfold. I think there's a couple of queries with her drawing the inside gate. A, if Pride of Jenny is not the same horse, well, it's going to be falling back in its lap and Mr. Brightside is going to be the one making the move. She's going to have a lot of ground to make up. B, if Pride of Jenny is back, there's going to be that nice big gap and Bia Sistina is still going to be stuck on the fence trying to get out. And Mr. Brightside is going to be a long way in front. So I'm just a little bit concerned with the draw. I definitely went into the race thinking I was going to find Bia Sistina. But again, at the price as well with these unknowns, uh, 210, when a horse like Storm Boy is around that price, I'd be taking Storm Boy every day of the week over via sustain in a race like this. So I'm going to go with Mr. Brightside, but as Shane would know, when I go Mr. Brightside, Mr. Brightside does not win. So I feel like I'm jinxing <laughs> this horse, but I'm hoping maybe it'll return. I think the run the other day was really good. Uh, Barrier 4 is going to work. May have to do the donkey work, which is a bit of a concern, but we've seen he's able to do that. And again, there's a lot of question marks on just what pride of Jenny is going to show up in this race. I think better second up, six starts, four wins and a second. And again, I think Pinstripe's going to be one pair further back. I think Via Sistina is going to be on the fence, uh, stuck in there as well. So I think he gets his chance to potentially just run away with it and tr- get them to try, uh, run him down. And I'm going to back his toughness late. So Mr. Brightside for me, my value bet's going to be a horse that I've had a bit of luck catching at bigger prices. I feel like I'm one run early, but a tissue uh, always goes well at the track. I mean, the Flemington track, six starts, three wins, a second and a third. Way better horse second up has won three from eight with two seconds. Again, if the real pride of Jenny shows up, that's only going to help a tissue. It's going to make it feel more like a 15, 1600 meters. So can settle back from the barrier, I think gets into a nice position. I think can show a really nice turn of foot. I think the price is quite nice there. So Mr. Brightside, the best bet, and uh, a tissue will be the value selection. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I think we might have just lost uh, our little man, Shane Anderson, too. I'm not too sure where he is, but he'll come back. Uh, he'll pop back <laughs> up here at some stage, Ads. Uh, I'm actually going uh, on with the fave here, mate, via Sistina. Could not have been any more impressive. Got the Chris Waller polish. Um, J-Mac comes down. Uh, it's a cracking race. It's a cracking addition. And as I said off the top, I think we're going to know a hell of a lot more, uh, you know, after this race, uh, you know, a lot of these horses moving forward. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to play. Uh, I'll probably be going a lot wider in the quaddy day than just uh, via Sestino, I can assure you of that. And my value runner uh, is actually Antino, who I thought ran a slashing first up run over the 1,400. 1,600, got uh, three from four, I think, in his second up the horse. Uh, why not at a uh, at a nice little price? Uh, can't uh, this horse get the job done? Uh, and I think might be the one that's charging over the top uh, late as well. But uh, yeah, really, really cracking edition of uh, this race. That is for sure. Um, I just don't know where Shadow's gone there, Ads. Just <laughs> there you go, buddy. He's back. London technology, you've got to love it. Get a bit of a get a bit of a storm. <laughs> Over here, and next minute I'm uh, I'm kicked off. Apologies for that. <laughs> Don't stress, mate. Don't stress. We're just going to pick it up. They'll be able to cut that and edit. Yeah. Um, edit for more little tips there. Right, eight. All right, boys. Let's move along to the group two, the Theo Mark Stakes at Rose Hill. Raced on over thirteen hundred meters on Saturday. The favourite Celestial Legend at four dollars twenty. Bases loaded at five bucks. Punch Lane at six bucks. Win Chat at six dollars. Boo Talk nine dollars. New Energy fourteen. End Cap at seventeen bucks. Molly Bloom twenty six. And Opasenko at twenty seven dollars. That is all. Thanks to Palm about that market for the Theo Marks Stakes uh, ads. I'm going to come back to you, mate. Your thoughts. Uh, this is going to be an important race, shaping um, some spring features moving forward. 
Yeah, an important race and a tough one as well because horses like Celestial Legend normally take a little bit of time to build up into a preparation. Then you've got bases loaded who's drawn wide but can show speed as well. And a couple of other horses that have shown plenty of ability. It's just how they're going to go first up. And, you know, you're looking at the trials and trying to assess those uh, with different track conditions as well with the rain that we've seen in Sydney. I've ended up going with bases loaded. I just think in an open race, it's probably the safest bet. We know the Waterhouse and Bot Runners are always fit. We know they're going to go forward. This horse has enough speed to get in front or sit outside the leader. Uh, the recent trial was obviously very impressive, winning by six lengths, beating Remark. Has been a winner first up. The track condition should suit, looking at the weather. There's a bit of rain on Thursday, but that's about it. And I think the, the Group 1 two-year-old form should really stand up. So there's not a lot of confidence, but I do think base is loaded at a nice price is worth having a look at. And another horse that I've had a little bit of luck with um, throughout the carnivals is NCAP. And I'm just going to put it in again. I mean, this is uh, a horse that's only won the one from 13, but does have seven other top three finishes. Second in the group one, Golden Rose behind Militarite. Second in the group two, Hobart Bill behind Celestial Legend. Always goes out at a big price, always honest. And the one thing when you actually go through its record, it's normally drawn the car park. So from seven, second up, I can just see it getting into a nicer position and it's normally pretty honest. So in a very open race, I'm happy to give NCAP a little uh, push there as the value bet, but I'll go with bases loaded as the one to beat. That's uh, funny, mate, because my value in the race is NCAP as well. I thought a ridiculous price. And uh, Jay Collett uh, on board is a nice little pointer for mine as well. And I've just gone, I'll just do mine quickly, Shadow, but I've gone punch lane, looking to make it three on the trot, three on the bounce. Freeman team is absolutely flying. So that's uh, the way I'm heading in that race. Shano, what about your thoughts, mate? Yeah, guys, I've come back to Celestial Legend as my best in the race. I think Adam makes a very good point point uh you know he's a horse that usually takes a run but i like the fact they've given him two trials into this his first up run so i'm thinking he might be a little bit more forward yep. this preparation particularly if they're hoping to keep him perhaps to more of the sprinters division um who knows he may still get out to a mile at some stage but right now he could potentially be you know an everest prospect so if that's the case i think He's more wound up than what we've seen from previous preparation. He's clearly the class runner. You go back to his uh, form in the autumn with wins in the round with Guineas, the Doncaster. He's an exceptional talent. And I think from a good draw, he will be back in the field. Hopefully the breaks come his way. And I think at around that price, I'm willing to take the gamble on him as my best. So Celestial Legend, the class runner, the best for me. Uh, my value bet uh, is basis loaded. Um you know, I know he's, there's not much of a price difference between uh, he and Celestial Legend, but I, from my, my perspective, I think one of the two of these horses will win the race. Um, from the outside, to Adam's point, he's got natural speed. He probably works across. He looked terrific in a recent trial, so I think he's uh, he's wound up for a big run. So they're the two I'm most keen on. Celestial Legend down is my best. I'm really quite keen on the price he is at the moment. And both are slowed at my value, but um, I think it's going to be a really good race. Big field, I like it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge field. Uh, and even down the bottom wind channel, you're just kind of hoping there's a couple of scratches to get a run uh, in the race of being uh, well-founded markets. Right, eh? we're going to go far and wide ads. Uh, what else do you like over the weekend, mate? Well, well, I think Shane and I might have some similar ones here. Last night, 3 a.m., I hear the phone buzzing away. And what is it? It's the bolting in boys texting about what races and horses we're going to look at. And I rolled over, looked with one eye and said, I think Storm Boy and Mayfair will be winning this weekend. We'll be looking at them in a similar race. And seeing they're in separate races, so I'm going to be backing both. So at Rose Hill, I'm race seven, number one, Mayfair. Loved the run the other day. I think this horse has got a lot of ability. And uh, I think Storm Boy's in some of the best form we've ever seen it. So race eight, number two, Storm Boy. And then I think I'm going to go head to head with Shane here. I do, Shane's tip, which I'm going to ruin for you, Shane. I'm sorry, but... Uh, Quintessa, I do think, is the horse to beat here. There's no doubt. Huge first up run, gets the extra distance, ticks all the boxes there. But I'm not doing a Perth tip, so I'm going to fly the WA flag here. Al Safina is a serious galloper, and when Grant Williams and Alana Williams take horses to Melbourne, you take note, especially Norm, it's been for Bob Peters. This is a different uh, stable horse here, but got a lot of ability. Blake Shin's booking should just get back and run on strongly, and I think we'll see her class throughout this preparation. The each-way price was very nice. I saw 12s this morning, but it's already gone and into about $8 now. So I'll go each way with our Safina, but hoping she can run a really good race. That's uh, Flemington Race 7, number 8. Love it. Shano, you're obviously uh, Quintessa, one of your better bets of the weekend. Yeah, I'm pretty keen on her in the Let's Elope class, Mayor, um, and I think she'll uh, be in for a pretty good spring. So I've got race uh, seven, number one, Quintessa at Flemington, and as Adam pointed out, we're aligned at uh, Rose Hill, race seven, number one, Mayfair, race eight, number two, Storm Boy. I think those three are uh, in for uh, big runs this weekend. I'm happy to be with all of them. Absolutely love it. Well, I'm going to stick locally. I'm sticking at Flemington, boys, and I'll stick with old Uncle Lynn's. 
Uh, and I'm keen for a horrifying to make it three on the bounce for Lindsay. Loves racing at Flemington in the Archer Stakes over the 2,500 metres. And, uh, yeah, I reckon can uh, can get the job done again. Lindsay's just found the trick with his horse, and I think keeping the horse fresh uh, is the key. So uh, hopefully uh, can get the job done again at about six bucks. And then we're going to come back to race number one. Uh, a horse down the bottom called uh, Moby Dick. This horse has got a heap of ability uh, as the cat just swings past him. So <laughs> <laughs> heap of ability and uh i, I reckon gonna come back really really well this preparation frosty lane uh jumps on which is always a big tick for mine uh and at about seven six or seven bucks uh i'd be having something on uh, race one number 13 moby dick down the flemington straight hey shana you're off to uh the race this weekend mate you're off to uh, doncaster yeah, that's right. Over to the UK this weekend uh, to see the running of the St. Ledger, um, which awesome. will be good. Uh, it looks like a, a high-class group of uh, three-year-olds there, and we might see one or two make their way down to Australia. So uh, looking forward to it. Fantastic. Can't wait to get that insight into uh, some of those international horses too, which Shane Anderson is very, very good at. And uh, what about you for the weekend? What's happening in Vegas, mate? Well, I actually have a Vegas wedding to go to, and I've been told to dress Vegasy. Ooh. So, uh, looking forward to this. It's going to be Elvis. a very interesting night. <laughs> oh, that's grass. That is unbelievable. The uh, what do they call the uh, city? Of- the city of weddings or whatever over there. It's yeah, I've been waiting for this. I've got some big glasses. I'm going to get some very silky and outrageous shirts. So it's going to be a cracking <laughs> night, I think. Uh, fantastic. Listen, uh, great racing, and I can't wait. The next uh, eight weeks, seriously, we're going to have a whole lot of fun, and uh, we're going to keep the Palm Event uh, followers well in tune. You boys got off to an absolute flyer last weekend. Let's hope we can continue it this weekend, Legends. We'll talk next week. Thanks, boys. Appreciate See it. See you, guys. Take care. Bye. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.